Hi, this is Vicki from Learning Home Volunteers. And in this video session, Lessons Am I Doing It Right, was added because uh, our parents asked. You know, I think when you're sitting there playing and all by yourself without people around you to go, oh, that was really good or that wasn't so good, it's easy to doubt your skills as a teacher or maybe even the methodology that we use. So in this session, we're going to dive a little bit deeper and talk about the standards of kindergarten readiness and how that is measured. We're also going to talk about how important academic skills such as letter, color, number, and shape recognition figure into that readiness. And then finally, you know, it's nice that you think it'll work, but how do you know it will work? So let's take a look at our first slide. In this video, we're going to try to answer these questions that were asked by our parent teachers. What does the child really need to master to be ready for kindergarten? What does the school expect from them from the day that they enter school? How do I know if I'm teaching correctly? And then, you know, okay, yeah, but there are certain things that are happening in my lessons. I'm not even sure that's normal. <laughs> it happens all the time for me. <laughs> um, and then finally, you know, are there other resources that will help me be a better teacher that I can be using um, to work with, with my child? Now, in the previous video sessions, we've covered all the mechanics of the lesson even shown you some of the activities that are used in the lesson and developmental changes that are happening to the child. But we really haven't sat down and written down what it means to be prepared for kindergarten from the school's perspective. So let me share with you now. So if you think it helps to think about what it's like to be a teacher in, as a kindergarten teacher, so there are, you know, a kindergarten class in a school and your child will be one of many children in the classroom. They may have anywhere from 20 to 40 children. All the teaching is done in English. And the child, all the children are expected to learn new material based on a curriculum um, that is set up by the state based on a foundation of skills that they expect to be there. And by skills, the school system isn't obviously expecting that they're going to come in being able to read and write and do their multiplication tables and do science. They're expecting that they're going to be able to be ready to learn. So as a teacher, I'm looking for the following. To make my life easier and for me to be effective with a child, the child has to have great language skills. The child needs to have vocabulary skills to understand what I'm talking about. To be able to ask questions if they don't understand and to make themselves understood. And I hope that they're able to ask for the things that they need, like being able to go to the bathroom, or if they're not feeling well, or they're thirsty, or hungry, or need help with their shoes. If they can't ask, I don't know. So the more words that the child knows, the better. The more comfortable that the child feels about expressing themselves, using the words that they know, the better. And that isn't just for communicating with teachers. You know, they're going to need to be able to communicate with their schoolmates as well. And that play that happens in, this, in the play yard with the other kids, they're going to be speaking English. And they're going to need that to help negotiate and fit in with the rest of the group. So imagine they're playing a game. Who's going to get to play Superman? What crisis is happening so they can play the right role? Who is the bad guy? And how is the story going to unfold? Kids, games, and the... <laughs> Teachers are also looking for children that can exert self-control that are self-regulating. You know, it's important in the relationships that your child has with teachers and other children that they can control their emotions and instead of taking action, use their words to express their feelings and to work through conflicts. So they should be able to self-calm, 
calm themselves down so they're not hugely angry, sad, whatever. Be able to express their feeling. I'm sad, I'm mad because, you know. And then be able to work to negotiate a compromise, you know, like you took my toy, I want it back, and not act impulsively by just grabbing it out of somebody else's hand. In fact, school as an institution is all about collaborative groups working towards a goal. The teacher is hoping that that class will move together through the curriculum and exit out of her classroom learning all the things that should have been learned during that year. Teachers are looking for children that have a sense of curiosity, one that wants to explore, is easier to experiment, wants to try things that are new. And if you think about it, school is always going to be about new. If you already know it, we don't cover it again. So new subjects, deeper learning, new ideas. And school is going to be your child's main job for 13 years. So having the drive and excitement to learn and explore will help keep school fun and rewarding. Make it so you don't have to drag them to school. Children or teachers are also looking for children who can share what they have learned. This is how teachers know that they understand the material. And you could imagine that you could understand what's happening, but if you can't explain it in English or with words, um, they need to know that you can actually understand the materials. It's also an essential skill to be able to collaborate with uh, others on complex problems. So as we work in a group, if I can explain what my idea is, and then listen to other people's idea, and then we all decide to try whichever one's first, that'll help us collaborate more effectively. Teachers are also looking for parents that are going to partner with them to help their children learn. A partnership between the parent and the teacher makes sense because the parents know their child better than anyone. You've obviously been there since birth, right? And teachers know what needs to be learned and the different ways it can be mastered. So if you can tell them the kinds of ways your child likes to learn best, then they can tell you the different ways they can uh, master those skills at school and it'll make it easier for your child to master the skills that it's going to take to move from grade to grade. Okay, but what about those letters, numbers, colors, and shapes? those academic skills that preschool covers that I think needs to be part of what we're going to be needing in kindergarten. You're right. They will need to do those things. And I know it feels so, so much better to have a quantifiable task that you can check off your list. You know, the child knows the letter A, check. The child can identify the color red. Check. But we're preparing a child for school. And the school is always going to be presenting a new and ongoing set of challenges. And in fact, the child will need a minimum of 12,000 hours of instructions just to graduate high school. So how do we do that for 12,000 hours worth? So what will help them meet those challenges is a child that's excited about exploring, who enjoys learning just as much as eating ice cream. And how can you help them find that excitement and drive by encouraging play? Well, you celebrate the joy of discovery. You celebrate the drive when they want to figure out something new to find new things to, to discover themselves. I know, but you're still worried about the letters, colors, shapes, and numbers, right? Okay. The easiest way to, to learn for children at this age and for many years to come is through play. So go ahead and play. Point out the colors. Count the number of Ninja Turtles or the number of shoes Polly Pocket owns, and I guarantee they will le learn their letters, numbers, colors, and shapes. I know, you're still worried because the child won't count with you, right? You're counting, never do they say one after you say one. Don't stress. Maybe developmentally they're working on jumping on one foot. I promise, they are listening. They are absorbing. 
And remember that skills are not learned evenly across all subjects. I have a story of a mom told me. She's been counting and counting and counting. And finally, she brings out these things that she's planning to count. And he goes, I, no. He goes, look, I brought the things. And you know what we could do with these? And he says, not count. And I thought, ooh, that's, that's what's clear. Good communication like that. And so she didn't. And then about three weeks later, they're driving in the car in the van with their family. And he goes, Mom, there are seven people in the car with us. And so she counts, and sure enough, there are seven. See, he already knew. <laughs> he just didn't want to count with you. Finally, so how do you make sure that your child is interested so they will learn? Easy. You want to follow the child's interests. So if the child loves cars, then do what you can to learn everything you can about cars and share what you know about cars. If the child loves unicorns and rainbows, then as a family, let's learn about unicorns and rainbows and share everything you guys can find out about those. I promise the child will lead you where they need to go. So how do you know you're doing it right? Finally, an easy question. <laughs> the other ones are pretty hard. Uh, you know you're doing it right when the child actually looks forward to the play and the child is enjoying play. You know, engagement at play sometimes looks serious and joyous all at the same time. They're diving into the play and this is a s sign that you're doing well. If you feel like you don't see this, you can always ask, do you want to keep playing with this? And if they say no, that's fine. A game can be unfinished. An art project can be half done. A city can still need construction. Let these incomplete tasks go. Clean up and offer the child another activity choice. Children that are having a good time probably won't want to stop playing. They will want to keep the item that they're playing with. So how do you know that they're learning, even when this is happening? Well, the changes you see are going to be really subtle. Maybe they're using a new word. Maybe they're playing longer with activities. Maybe they want to repeat the game that they played last session children as they're developing competence want to feel that competence over and over again so they may play things that they do well already so what happens when the play doesn't go so well you know is that normal well yes it is <laughs> you know not all play sessions are good and you can see all of the different kinds of behaviors that are on this side. And yet, all of these are normal to happen during play. You know, the nice thing I like about working with three-year-olds, two-year-olds, two to five-year-olds, is it's fun. But it can be super challenging. Because, I'll let you know a secret about these little ones, they put 100% of their effort in all of the time. So when they're happy, things are going well they're very 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 happy and when they're having a hard time they're having a very hard time you will always know how a three-year-old feels you may not know why they feel it or but you'll or what they're feeling but you could certainly see the feeling you will know how they feel so how do you know what a child would like to play with hmm how do I know that things are going to be okay? To answer these questions, you know, I don't know what your child will like or dislike, but be assured they'll show you. <laughs> and I do know that children of this age are open, caring, a little bit silly, but I want to remind you they're just little humans that are learning to express themselves using words. Sometimes they just can't find the words to let you know what they're feeling, so they will show you with their behavior. 
And I'm sure sometime during the course of lessons, you'll see a really wide range of emotions. They'll cry, they'll be frustrated, they'll be sad. Maybe you'll cry, <laughs> maybe you'll get frustrated, maybe you'll be sad. And sometimes you're just not going to be synced up. You know, the last time you sat down to play, they loved doing the art stuff. But this time, even though they pulled the paint out, they just don't want to play with it. Or maybe they just want to play by themselves. Or maybe they want to read the book the same time over and over and over and over again. Or maybe they just want to sit and watch you play with the materials because they're just trying to figure out how you do that. Sometimes, despite the engagement and in interest in an activity and the academic content that you're working on, it feels like no progress is being made. But trust me, they are listening. They are learning. And one day, magic will happen and you'll get to see this magical change. My advice to you is keep your energy up. Offer choices. You know, one, both, more than one thing so they can make a choice. And remember that research says that if all you did was talk, it will be a good enough. And follow the child's lead. The next time, they won't remember that they were tired and cranky. And hopefully you won't remember that they wanted to play Candyland over and over again and you thought you were going to go and sing. And the next session will be perfect. So, any hints? Well, yeah, I think I have a few. Here are some common things that happen during a play. Uh, but before answering some of the common occurrences, I want you to know that you can always get answers, questions that you have answered or help. At the end, we're going to talk about those resources, but do not hesitate to call us, text us, whatever, you know, class tag us, whatever you want to be able to get those things. I don't want you to feel like you're not supported because we are here for you. You just need to reach out. And there's no stupid question, no weird things. We've seen pretty much all of it. So let's look at our first question. The child is happy and throwing things up in the air. Well, that's not really that great is as a mom who's going to have to probably clean all that stuff up. But sometimes joy and excitement is really hard to contain. You remember, they're little and they're learning. So try putting some words to help, um, the feelings to help. It is really exciting to play the game. And it was exciting, so exciting you threw the cards into the air. And I'm happy you're excited. Me too. Now we need to get the cards back in order so we can play and have more fun. Sometimes there's just no way that you can s swing solo time with your learner. The next door neighbors are there. Maybe you're, you know, it's a minimum day for school for your siblings. Uh, maybe the cousins came over. So what do you do? Well, uh, here I think you just include the other children, incorporate them into play. Learning to play with others is something that is skills that needs to be practiced. And honestly, we don't get to do that very often with other children when we're at home by ourselves. You know, and if this is going to be a continuing theme, you're watching some neighbor's kids, um, just let us know and we'll include more materials in your box so you have things for them to do. Sometimes m weird things happen, like you're playing along and the child just actually leaves the room. They were not happy. They didn't seem unhappy. They just walked out. Sometimes children need a break and they can't really communicate what they want to say. So it's up to you whether you decide if this is the right time to play with them or if this was not so subtle of a message that, you know, playtime is over. You can try and get some clarity by asking, do you want to play with me and or this? Or whether you even want to follow them out of the room if you think that they're just taking a self-enforced time out um, to calm themselves down. Um, hopefully that helps. 
still have questions, you know, you're not alone. We are all here to support you. All of the other parent teachers are here to support you. Learning Home Volunteers has created a resource center filled with all sorts of video content. There are how-to videos to show you how to use felt stories, ideas on activities, the sessions about developmental progression as the child moves through the program. And if you don't see what you're looking for, email us, call us, message us, and we'll help you find it. If you're watching a video, you know, regarding with the lesson and you have questions, you know, contact us. If it's during the training, there's discussion boards for Q&A. Add your question there. We can all learn from the answer and someone will post in a response. If it's, you don't want to do this electronically and just want to talk to other humans, <laughs> we're certainly open from 10 to 6 every day and Saturday every two, 2 to 6. There's always a staff member here and many times a, a number of other parents or volunteers or childhood experts that are helping us get ready for the next learning session. We are always working on learning activities and we'd love to talk with you. Come and share your experience and of course feel free to bring your child. Finally, do not ever hesitate to call us. We will do our best to get you an answer even if it doesn't have to do with learning. You know, there's so much challenges that we all experience um, day to day. And if you need help to move on to the next piece, we're here for you. I know when you're in the home with a child, you could feel alone, but you aren't. There are many volunteers, staff members, early childhood educators, teachers, learning science people, all working on the same mission, preparing each child to enter school prepared and get an equal start at school. You can help us all feel more connected if you share via class tag. Class tag allows pictures, videos, and text. You can post from your phone or your computer or tablet, whatever is easier. And we love to think, hear about things that went well we love to hear, I know this seems counter uh, uh, indicated, but we love to hear about things that didn't go well. Um, and answer the questions that you're having, what activities you're using, the books that are being read, anything that you want to share. Whatever you will uh, enter will be shared with all of the other participants working with your age group, your fellow parent teachers, activity developers, and staff. Talk with the other parent teachers and your cohort. You all have unique perspectives. You, they may have, have a kid that's been having that behavior for a while or, or had those kinds of things. Reflect together. Have language differences between the families. Try communicating privately through class tag. Class tag translates between 180 different uh, languages um, automatically. So think of us all as your co-teachers. We're here to help you. We're here to, uh, to help you get through this. And hopefully you'll come to one of our community events, which are open to all participants and their families. We normally have a speaker or an activity intended for a child. And at these events, you can meet other families involved with Learning Home Volunteers and spend some fun time with your family and learn to, something new to try with a child after the session is done. Uh, parents and volunteers like get different things from learning home volunteers and here are some of the comments that we've received about uh, their experiences we've had those that have left and entered kindergarten they were did so well um, sometimes it changes the relationship that you're having with your child and for those of us that are volunteering even myself um, I think it's a very rewarding experience being able to put things in your home that your child gets to play with. It gives me great joy. The last thing I wanted to share with you is the results that have gone of those children that have gone before yours. We have not graduated a cohort that was not ready for kindergarten. And in fact, all of our graduates have mastered academic skills that would have set them up for a successful first grade entry without e issues. 
you parents are doing a great job. And we know that you're going to do the same as those that came before you. You're doing great, and we are so proud of you spending time and playing with your child to help them get ready for school. Thank you for listening. This video session is done.